The original manifestation of the F-Pace SVR was a machine we enjoyed. It was terrific for long distances, big loads and bad conditions. And mostly a good deal more subtle than you were expecting of a 550 brake horsepower supercharged Alpha SUV. Yet it was able to turn a slyly amusing side when you wanted it to. But the interior was a right let down. Not the space or comfort, but the ambience and the screen systems. They were obsolescent when it was launched, never mind come facelift time. So those have a had a major going over. Same for all F-Pace versions. The dash is subtly reshaped and has more definition and visual structure. Extra fillets of metallic trim are welcome supporting actors. The heater controls look better and mostly feel it. The central screen system is JLR's very fine Pivi Pro, they never satisfactorily explained that name. It has been well received on the Defender and is now cropping up all over the LRs and Jaguars. In most ways the mechanicals are unchanged. But as performance engineers just can't resist, there are small enhancements all over the place. The muscly supercharged V8 now makes yet more torque, a very healthy 516 pounds feet from 3,000 RPM. Also a tiny bit more power, again not at all undernourished at 550 brake horsepower. So another 2 miles per hour on the top speed, at 178 miles per hour, wholly irrelevant except for bragging rights against Germans limited to 155. And a shaved 0 to 62, at 4.0 seconds. What it still does not have, against all fashion and conscience, is any form of hybridization. We'd respectfully point out you can get very close to the same performance and space with vastly lower running costs in Jaguar's own I-Pace, still the best driving electric SUV. The calibration of the SVR's chassis electronics, steering assistance, damper tuning and rear difference, have been tweaked too. That was possible because the whole car has a new electrical system. Plus there are improvements to suspension bushes and links. The brakes have a new booster and better cooling. Design changes for the F-Pace facelift include a bonnet that snuggles right up to the grille, removing a cut line. Lights are new front and rear. Know the SVR by its bigger nostrils for better cooling, holes in the bonnet to breathe out heat, vents behind the wheels to smooth air past, and a new rear valance. Above the rear screen, the spoiler has its own spoiler. Truth is mind you, if the punters find a reason not to take to a car when it's new, they seldom flock back even if the problems are fixed at facelift time. So don't expect to see too many of these. Even if it's brilliant. The F-Pace is a bit of an outlier, because it slots between two of the SUV size packages that the Germans decree. And actually, the idea of something less bulky and less flash than a full-size German SUV is pretty appealing to us. Same with the SVR. It has a character of its own versus other Uber SUVs. The engine is fun to use but less of a bare-fanged animal than others, and the whole car is nicely laid back as a daily companion. Unless you deliberately go looking for its sharper side. When you do, it's pretty darned engaging. Despite the weight, 2133 kilograms is a lot for a car on a lightweight aluminium architecture, the SVR gains speed with effortless force. The supercharged V8 just flicks away one gear after the other till you've chewed through more of the 8, and acquired bigger numbers on the speedo, than are reasonable. The transmission will mostly do what you expect, but control increases hugely if you use the aluminium wheel paddles. Hold it in a gear and the engine's better characteristics are laid gloriously open. It's fast responding and progressive in its delivery, no craze turbo explosion, but instead torque that's there right at your bidding. Although this SVR V8 is a banging loud thing under other bonnets, F-Type and Range Rover Sport especially, here it's a whole lot less of a cannon squadron. Don't get me wrong, it plays great tunes. But it farts out less overall volume and much less of the overrun pop and bang fakery. So people are surely a whole lot less likely to hate you as you slow down into their village, or accelerate to overtake them. It's a big car but an easy one to place accurately on the road, thanks to beautifully sorted steering and a suspension that isn't knocked left and right by bumps and ridges, either under power or brakes. The dampers control the weight really deftly. So you just bowl along, slightly wondering about that SVR badge. Then you push harder, hit the sport button and the one that partially loosens the traction controls. Then it properly livens up. 
It pivots promptly underneath you, with the central difference becoming rear biased, the rear one opening and closing to help the turn, and brake vectoring augmenting your steering intention. Their surprising steering feel, and a weir hay emphasis on power to the rear. It'll kick into definite oversteer before the fronts pull you straight again, but in a benign fashion. Add your fun. Then ease off and notice it's sweeter than other fast SUVs, and tire noise surprisingly low thanks to an active cancellation system. The F-Pace is a biggish SUV, though not the biggest, the KN and family members, and the X5, ML and Levante are even bulkier. But it's usefully bigger than the mid-size pack of X3, GLC, Macon, Stelvio. That translates into proper lounging room inside. The back seats have electric backrest adjustment too. It always had space, what's new is the sense of quality. The new trim really does lift the whole F-Pace range. For the SVR you get big electric bucket seats in livelier colors. The central screen has good resolution, snappy response and well-organized menus so you're not left prodding about for long. There's also a new screen for the instruments that's a huge step on from the Tamagotchi graphics of the pre-facelift job.